I'm going to do three examples of row reducing a matrix to just uh, show how it goes and make sure everybody's on, on board with that and also to show you the three different things that can happen when you do that. So first of all, I'm going to look at a situation where this is the augmented matrix for our system of equations. And I think you guys are pretty good at uh, knowing now what that's a shorthand for in terms of x plus 2y plus z equals 0, etc. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the row reduction. The first row doesn't change. And I'm going to do this in the standard way where um, I'm going to use this pivot to kill this co these columns, and then I'm going to use what shows up here to kill what's underneath. Um, you don't absolutely have to do it that way, but I recommend it because it, it means that if we if we if you use that style, you're going to get to the exactly the same place, and we can all compare answers easier. Um, so I'm going to take uh, row two minus two times row one. So that's going to be zero minus one minus one one, and I'm going to take row three minus three times row one going to be 0. 1 minus 6 is minus 5. 2 minus 3 is minus 1 again. And 0 minus 0 is 0. Okay. By the way, I picked these pretty much at random, just small random numbers. And we're going to see what happens when you have a fairly random 3x3 uh, three three system. Remember, we can put dotted lines in here. This is the coefficient matrix. These are the right-hand side. Um, all right. Now, I'm going to just rewrite the first two columns. Don't need to change those yet. And now I'm going to use, this is the new pivot here. Oh, it's called, so it's called the leading entry, what he calls it in our, in our book. And I'm going to use that to kill this guy. And so I'm going to take the new row 3, and I'm going to subtract 5 times row 1, row 2 rather. And that's going to make this 0. Lots of negative numbers. Don't be afraid to do some scratch calculations. If you're doing this by hand, it's very easy to lose the negatives. But minus 1 and then plus 5 is 4. And then 0 minus, so that's minus 5. And it's important to note that even though I'm going to push this all the way to reduced uh, row echelon form, this is really most of the work. Because if we had to solve right now, we could solve for uh, the z variable. This is for z equals minus 5. And then it would be easy to solve for y, then it would be easy to solve for x. And sometimes that's all you do in terms of elimination. But it's really nice, especially for the theory of the subject, to push it even further. And so now, um, the systematic way to do this is now you, instead of going down the rows and sort of left to right, you go up from the bottom. And I'm going to use this entry to kill what's above it. Now, it's kind of a matter of taste as to whether you divide that, make them one first or not. I'm going to make them one first, so that's the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make those pivots, rescale each row to make each pivot equal to one. And I could have easily had fractions come in before. It just, I was lucky that I didn't get fractions coming in before, but now I'm definitely getting fractions. And now, uh, I'm going to use this to kill what's above it. And, oops, I just said that and I didn't do it. Oops. So I'm going to kill this. I'm going to take uh, row 1 and I'm going to take minus row 3. That's going to be a 0 and then that's going to be a plus 5 fourths. Um, so actually, yeah, what I, I said, I'm going for working from the bottom up and I didn't do it. You actually should just wrote, write the bottom row first because that's what's not changing. And then row 2, I'm also going to subtract off row 3 from that. So this doesn't change. Of course, this had better not change, because that's the stuff that's good. All this stuff in this bottom diagonal is stuff that we really want to lock in. It's just these things that we want to kill if we can. And so that's going to be 0. And then minus 1 plus 5 fourths is 1 fourth. And then we're almost done. And we're going to use we're going to take row one minus two times row two. Remember the standard way to do this is if you're modifying row one, for example, you don't put a multiplier in front of row one. 
you just put it in front of the in front of the row that's coming in. Even if that means you have to have fractions, that's it's it's worth it usually to to do it in the standard way. There's a lot of great connections with stuff later on, which we might not get to, but you would definitely get to in a um, a full linear algebra class that make it worthwhile. Okay, and again, I should start writing from the bottom now. And um, now I'm just going to do this operation, this minus two of this, okay, so that's zero. This doesn't get hurt. Of course it doesn't. I made it zero. I would be really disappointed if it then shows up not being zero. But because I already killed this entry, I can then use this row, and the only thing that can do is change the entry above it, and that's what I wanted to kill. Of course, on the right-hand side, it's going to do whatever it wants to do, and that's going to have to do with what the actual answer is. So one minus two times this, so five-fourths minus two-fourths, is three-fourths. So I'm getting x equals three-fourths, y equals one-fourth, z equals minus five-fourths. In this case, I got the identity matrix on the left-hand side. This happened to be the same number of rows, in other words, equations, as unknowns. And so it's a square matrix of coefficients. And this is actually what you get if you just put in random numbers for those nine numbers. You are going to get the identity matrix. It's only special kinds of equations, three by three systems, where you wouldn't get this, although I'm going to show you a couple in, right in, in a minute. When you get the identity matrix, your answer is sitting there in the right-hand column. Because um, you can either think of it as saying, OK, x equals 3 fourths, y equals 1 fourth, z equals 5 minus 5 fourths. A more sophisticated way of, of saying it is that's the identity matrix times the vector x equals this vector 3 fourths, 1 fourth, minus 5 fourths. Well, the identity matrix is exactly what doesn't change the vector. That says x is 3 fourths, 1 fourth, minus 5 fourths. So it's really nice that we got the identity matrix there. And it's especially nice that that happens so often, that that actually is sort of the generic case. Okay, um, that's a good place to stop. I'll resume in another video.